Uh, how many of you really know that everything and all things work together for your good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. The good is working for your good. And the bad is working for your good. Amen. The requirement is you got to love the Lord. And are the call according to his purpose. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. We thank God for you today. As I... Today is... Uh, well, first of all, I want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. A happy Mother's Day to you. God bless you. God bless you. We give honor to uh, Pastor Lewis, to Reverend Morris, to the official staff of this church. Y'all go ahead and sit down. I'm going to talk for a minute today before I preach. Uh, we give honor to the official staff of this church and all that make up this congregation. We give God praise for you. Amen. Uh, this is another Mother's Day. And as I was home meditating, could you turn me down? Where's Landon? T turn me down just a little bit, Landon. Um, as I was home meditating on Mother's Day, I had to fight back the tears. Amen. Because uh, if I had worn a rose today, it would not have been red. It would have been white. And so I decided to wear black and white, and then I didn't have time to get my white rose, but um, I do want to remember all mothers, amen. And uh, can't replace mama. If you're a mother, and I'm trying to hurry up and get this out of the way. If your mother is still on this side of heaven, you ought to be thankful. Because when she's gone, she's gone, and you don't get to see her again, until you make it where she is. And we don't know when that's going to be. I want to do something today. Uh, as I was listening, and I guess it's a combination of all of the things that I'm going through and we are going through. Um, as I was listening to my wife lead in praise and worship, I realized how blessed I am. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of wives not leading in praise and worship. There's a whole lot of wives not in church at all. Amen. And it just hit me on how blessed I am. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to say publicly, thank you baby. Amen, amen. I want to say thank you for being a wonderful woman. Yeah. I want to thank you for being a wonderful mother. Mm -hmm. And 
I want to thank you for being a wonderful wife, a wonderful counselor, a wonderful praise and worship leader. When I think of you, I have to say, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. And um, it just, some reason it just hit me different today. It made me come into realization what the Lord has blessed me with. And so for all of the times that I did not express how wonderful you are. I'm sorry. I'll do better. I will do better. We're living in a world where our people are going astray. There is no doubt that where I am working now, that the Lord placed me there. Mm -hmm. And he, he placed me there for two reasons. And that is, he placed me there to bless me. And then he placed me there to be a blessing. Amen. And I want you all to know that me being where I am now is making me a better person. Amen. It's making me a better person. Because it, it is allowing me to see uh, the heartache and the pain that our children are going through. And most of that is not even their fault. They are victims, a number of them, of their parents. I know y'all ain't, ain't listening to me. They are victim of their parents. And so they cannot help how they are. And it hurts when people doesn't seek to understand why the children are misbehaving. They'll look at the behavior and then they'll blame them for their behavior. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. But if you look back at the environment well. that they came out of, uh -huh. then you can understand why they're acting the way they're acting, which really establishes a need for today's message. Today's message, I could really do a series on, but I will, pro I will try to be as brief as possible. We have 12-year-olds uh, uh, watching porn. We have elementary kids seeing their parents do adult things. And they can't handle that at that age. Yes, sir. We have mothers and fathers and grandfathers and uncles abusing their children. 
verbally, uh, physically, sexually, and then the law will turn around and put those abused kids back into the house of the abuser. And then you expect the kids to act all right. And so the kids grow up not knowing what they're supposed to do. Uh, we're living in a time when we are, because of what God has placed in us, We are living however we see fit to live. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten so far yeah. away from what God has said yeah. that what God has said looks like it's wrong. I'm going to prove today that we're living in a time where wrong looks like right and right looks like wrong. We're living in a time when we are given credit to the devil of what God is doing and then we give God credit for what the devil is doing. We're living at a time that we don't recognize the devil being the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't recognize God being God. Yeah. We're living in a time where we recognize the Holy Spirit as being a demonic spirit. And a demonic spirit being the Holy Spirit. This is where we have drifted to. And one of the key characters that is in the kingdom of God that God has laid out to turn this thing around yeah. are our mothers. And and so today I want to talk about the message of a Christian aged mother. I want to talk about the message of a Christian aged mother. You can find uh, this message in Titus chapter 2. Uh, verses 3 through 5. Right. Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. Now, I'm going to make this as positive as I can. But if you feel yourself getting a little uncomfortable 
that's those spirits that I was telling you about that we recognize the Holy Spirit as a demonic spirit and a demonic spirit as the Holy Spirit because what you think is Demonic is holy. And the reason you think what is demonic is holy is because some of us are demonic. And we are demonic because we have developed the Burger King mentality. Because we want to have it our way. And if it's not our way, then it must be demonic. Are y'all going to pray with me today? Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. Here is what it says, and you can read that with me. Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. The age women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. Watch this that the word of God be not blasphemed. I just want, before you sit down, blaspheme means giving the devil credit for what God has done. You may be seated. A few minutes, I want to give a subtopic of the value of mothers. The value of mothers. I got a main topic talking about the message of the Christian age mother, but then I'm going to talk about her value. Because I have a long ways to go, I want to jump right into the text. I won't go back and put it within context. That'll take me too long. But you go back and read verses 1 and 2, and you will see why it said likewise. Now, when it says likewise, the age women, and you can determine what age women are, but I would like to give you some of these qualifications of these age women and what their message is uh, before uh, uh, what their, I would like to give you some of their qualifications before I share the message with you. Because if if you have any questions Uh about who they are, Uh you can look at their qualifications. Huh? Are y'all going to pray with me today? Well, God's image is shared equally by women and men as Genesis 1, 26 and 27 says. Because God said, let us make man in our image 
and after our likeness. And he made woman and man, or man and woman. So I want to make it clear that man is no better than woman, and woman ain't no better than man, because both of us was made, or were made, in the image of God. Are y'all praying with me? Can we establish that as a foundation for this message? That man is no better than woman? And woman is no better than man? Because both of us are made in the image of God? Can we establish that as our foundation? Now, I want to establish that as our foundation because the message today is to mothers and to women and so those are the targets of this message the rest of us can eavesdrop in on what these messages are and these qualifications are just in case we fall into one of them Number two, the desirable qualities of the age women are listed in this text. Therefore, it shows us the conduct or the appropriate conduct for age women in the church. It gives their qualifications because it says to the age women, this is what you ought to be doing in the church it says to the age women here is your ministry in the church these are the qualities fitting for age women claiming to be godly women in other words if you claim to be a godly woman then these are the qualifications that you ought to have. First of all, it says your behavior ought to become holiness. Are y'all praying with me? Behavior means demeanor. Your demeanor, and thank you, Pastor uh, Lewis, your, your demeanor, your conduct, ought to become that which is holy. And if you call yourself a Christian, the first qualification of a Christian is to be saved. So, so that's step number one. You got to be saved. And then anybody that's saved is also sanctified. That means God has set you apart to do his will. It also means that you are sacred. In other words, you are to act like a sanctified person. You ought to act like God has set you aside. Number two, it says not false accusers. If you are age mother, you ought not be false accusing anybody. Because false accusers always refers to that of Satan. The devil is a false accuser. And so every time somebody false accuses someone, they are carrying out the will and the mission and the plan of Satan. Y'all ain't going to pray with me today. A, a, a godly mother should not be a false accuser. First of all, you ought to know what you're talking about. If you don't know what you're talking about, you really need to keep your mouth closed. Because when you open your mouth and don't know what you're talking about, you are displaying your ignorance. And then whenever you speak, you ought to be telling the truth. 
Now that doesn't mean you're going to tell everything that you know. You're only telling what needs to be told. But whatever you tell, it ought to be the truth. It ought to be the truth on you. It ought to be the truth on somebody else. And it surely ought to be the truth on God. And you should not be giving the devil credit what God done. And you should not be giving God credit for what the devil done. Because that still puts you in the category of a false accuser. And then next, it says, not given to much wine. That refers to heavy drinking. Now, I'm still talking about the desirable qualifications of the age Christian mother. So our age Christian mother should not be heavy drinkers. You are permitted to drink, but not get drunk. Do not list heavy drinking as a virtue. In other words, do not uphold heavy drinking. Huh? Don't insinuate or imply that it is all right to get drunk. Next, you ought to be teachers of good things. Y'all ain't praying with me. If you teach anybody anything, it ought to be good. From a positive viewpoint, the age women should teach scripture as it relates to life. Y'all ain't going to pray with me. If you are teaching something, don't you know you ought to be teaching scripture as opposed to how you feel or how you think? It ought to be scripture. On a negative viewpoint, the age women should not teach anything that is in violation of scripture. If it violates the scripture, you ought not to teach it. If it is is in violation of the scripture, age women, don't even imply that it's all right to do. Because God is going to hold you accountable for that which you teach. Informally, when we come to teaching, we're really talking about informal teaching. This is one-on-one encouragement. In other words, you ought to pull these young ladies to the side and give them some one-on-one encouragement. And it ought to be in accordance with the scriptures. Now, I want to say to the young women that if anybody teach you anything that you already know that is not according to scripture, don't you give them credit for being godly. Huh? If it's contrary to the scripture, that is not godly counsel. If it's contrary to scripture, as a matter of fact, it is demonic counsel. Huh? It is a picture of an older woman, those who were experienced in life. In other words, for you to be an age woman, you need to be experienced. In other words, at some point in time, you should have been married uh, and have children. And then you're taking the women in the congregation under, the, under their care, and, and then you are helping them adjust to life and their responsibilities. In other words, what you are teaching, you are literally teaching them how to live. You are teaching them what their responsibilities are and how do they carry out those responsibilities in a dignified way. Are y'all praying with me? It is blessed and a needed ministry in the church. 
So I came to tell you that you are valuable. The role of the aged women in the church is that of a teacher. The purpose of this message is to identify specifically and scriptorially some of the roles of aged women in the church. Notice the four qualities that aged women should have. Right after these four qualities, notice the word that. I just reviewed to you those four qualities, right? Right after those four qualities is the word that. And the rest of the statement is this, that they may teach the young women. In other words, you ought to have these qualities that you may teach. You ought to have these qualities so that you can teach. You ought to have these qualities because you can't teach anybody how to be what you are not. Are y'all going to pray with me today? Have these qualities so that you can teach the young women. And if you don't have these qualities, you need to press the reset button. Are y'all praying with me today? Now, I came to tell you that our mothers are valuable. They are valuable because they teach young women, number one, to be sober. Yeah, somebody write that down. They teach them to be sober. The word sober means to be disciplined. The word sober means to obey rules or conduct of behavior. In other words, they ought to be disciplined enough to obey the rules. Whatever rules that God have held them accountable for, you ought to be teaching them. Now look, honey, you need to be disciplined enough to obey these rules. In other words, you are training them how to think. One of the biggest problems that women have, especially young women, is they don't know how to think. Yeah. Now, the aged women have been through so much, you have you done been just like they were at some point. So while you're teaching, don't act like you never did it yourself. Uh huh. You did some of the same stuff yourself. You done made some of the same mistakes that they making. Are y'all gonna pray with me? You've been drunk. You done had sex out of wedlock. You done did all this. You've been cussing and acting loose. And you, you done did all of that. And everything you didn't do, you thought about doing it. And you wanted to do it. And Jesus said, if you think it, you're guilty of it. And so you have that understanding. And, and so it says you ought to teach them. You, you done tried it already. And you seen where it got you. So, so when you can relate to them, you, you done been through what they're going through. And so you have the wisdom and the knowledge. You say, honey, I was just like you. I thought just like you. But then when I tried it, here is what happened. And honey, I would advise you not to do this. Uh-huh. Teach them to be self-controlled. Teach them to be self Discipline, teach them to be self restrained, teach them to be discreet, teach them to be temperate. First Timothy 5 and 14 says, I will therefore that the young women marry, uh huh, bear children, guide the house. My, we, how far we done got away from that. I'll come back and I'm going to stick a pen there and come back and make a point on that in a few minutes. Give none occasion to the adversary, to the, I mean, adversary to speak reproach against you. In other words, those who would speak against you, don't give them a stick to hit you over the head with. In other words, if you're going to do some stuff, nobody ought to know about it. Hmm? When I was a young boy, I cursed like a sailor. But can no adult tell you they hurt me? 
Huh? I did some of the same stuff that everybody else did, but I was prudent enough to keep it out of the eyesight and the knowledge of the adults. Now, we done got footloose, fancy free. Hey, just everything is out. Ain't, ain't covering up nothing. Let me move on. Say what's on your heart now. Not only are the aged women valuable because they teach the young women to be sober. Yeah. But they also valuable because they teach them to love their husbands. Wow. I looked up this word love and it shot me. This word love in this context is philanthropia, which comes from the word filio or friend. Here, Titus. Paul is telling Titus to teach the aged women to teach these young women how to be friends with their husbands. <laughs> teach them how to be kind to their husbands. Teach them how to be benevolent huh? to their husbands. Benevolent means free. Huh? Benevolent means giving to your husband. I want to make that clear. Be benevolent to your husband. Be benevolent to who? To your husband. Be giving to who? To your husband. Be kind to your husband. This is the foundation of domestic happiness. Uh huh. If you don't love your husband, your house ain't going to be happy. If you're not a friend to your husband, your house is not going to be happy. Teach them how to be a friend to their friend. Because I looked up the word husband, and the word husband means friend. And so if the word love is friend, and then the word husband is friend, it says to the aged women, teach these young women how to be a friend to their friend. Not only are the aged women valuable because they teach young women to be sober and to love their husband, but they are also valuable because they are to teach them to love their children. Huh? Teach them to love their children. Now, the best illustration that I have for you in my explanation is Sister Davidson. If you want to know how to love your children, yeah. I, would, I would put her on a pedestal yes, and say, there's your model right there. Yes, because after, what, 34 years? 34 years? Thir thir 35, 36? Coming 36? After, after 35 years, and how old are you, Lamar? 32? Lamar's 32 years old? And for 32 years... Sister Davidson has been a model on how to love your children. Uh-huh. I mean, she's cooking dinner. She's cleaning the house. When the kids get, when, when, when they get ready to go to school, they are bathed and they are dressed. They are looking good. They are smelling good. Their hair is combed. They've done their homework. When they come home from school, dinner is on the table. Are y'all going to pray with me? She sit down at the table with them and do their homework and feed them. And when it's time to bed, she get them ready for bed and put them in the bed, making sure they get enough sleep. And so they are healthy, they are smart. All of them graduated from high school. All of them have went to college, but one have graduated from college. Some is still in there. 
made sacrifices for those kids, making sure that every one of them, all seven of them, yeah. had everything that they needed. Yeah. And guess what? I didn't spend hardly any money on bottles because she placed all seven to her breast. That means she had to be there. Uh-huh. When they got hungry, when as little kids, they was on her breast. Every time they needed something, mama was right there. So, so the way I can illustrate uh, 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 age mothers, teach your kids to love their parents, I would say look at Mother Davidson. Because she has been a mother. And I'm, and I'm in the pulpit preaching God's word. And her husband is proclaiming. That she has been a fantastic mother. So, not only are age women valuable because they teach young women to be sober, to love their husband, and to love their children, but they're also valuable because they teach them to be discreet. Huh? Discreet. Teach them to be sound. Teach them to be understanding. Teach them to be sober. Teach them to be temperate. Have a sound mind. Self-discipline. Self-restraint, watch this, of all passions and desires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Restrain yourself. Don't be just footloose and fancy free. Don't be a fool. Be, be sane. They use the word sanity. To behave in a sensible manner. Watch this. To be moderate. To be what? Moderate? What's moderate about most of our youth today? I'm going to just let that sink in for a minute. Now, I, I do want to remind you, I am preaching the word. And if anybody want to question my interpretation, I'll be in my office. And I'll be glad to show you how I got there. And you can take it and go to Notre Dame. You can take it and go to Bethel. You can take it to Howard University. Anybody who teaches theology, you can check me out. Mm -hmm. Our age women are to teach our young women to be moderate. If any, can I say this? If any of our age women is teaching our young women not to be moderate, I came to tell you that is a demonic spirit. Are y'all praying with me? It is a demonic spirit because the spirit of God said, teach them to be what? And that's what that word discreet means. To live sensibly, uprightly, godly, to have the right thoughts about what one should do or to let one's mind be guided on how they should use their body. That's what discreet means. It incorporates all of that. Not only are the aged women valuable because they teach young women to be sober, love their husband, love their children, and be discreet, but they also are valuable because they teach them to be chaste. Hmm. In other words, not a hoe. Not a thought. So if you're not a hoe, and if you're not a thought, then why are you looking like a hoe and you're looking like a thought? Y'all can understand that, can't you? That's what chase mean. Chase mean innocent. Chase mean pure. Chase mean blameless. Chase mean modest. Yeah. Chase mean clean. Yeah. 
Chaste means to be without moral defect or blemish and be pure. That's what the aged women are to teach the young women. If you don't teach them, how will they know? Hmm? That's your job. Mothers, those are, that's your job. Let me keep moving. Not only are the aged women valuable because they teach young women to be sober, love their husband, love their children, be discreet, be chaste, but they also are val valuable because they are to teach them to be keepers at home. Is that in the text? I did not write this. I'm just teaching what's already there. Is keepers at home in your Bible? Mm -hmm. is, is, is that in your Bible? To be keepers at home. The one who looks after the domestic affairs with prudence and care. Um, that, that's what the young wives ought to do. They ought to, be, they ought to look after the domestic affairs with prudence and care. Watch this. They ought to be active in household duties. They ought to be household managers. Uh-huh. I got scripture to back me up. Proverbs 14, verse 1. It said, every wise woman build her house, but the foolish pluck it down with her hands. Uh -huh. You check out Proverbs 14 and 1. And if you don't believe that, look at Proverbs 9 and 1. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewed out seven pillars. Now, seven is the number of completion. Now, she built her house, watch this, and, said, and she hewed out. Now, the fact that it used the word hewed, which means a rock, she, she hewed out seven pillars. What are those seven pillars? Well, that's what the house is standing on. That's what's holding up the house. In other words, she is completely sustaining the house. That's what the word, it was seven word meaning complete pillars, which what, that pillars would hold everything up. So she is completely holding up the house. Now, if you got a problem with that, Remember my introduction. Huh? We have gone so far from the word of God that wrong looked like right and right looked like wrong. Because what we're doing is what we want to do. And, 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 and is not consulting scripture. I remind you, my door is open. Now, don't go out of here talking about me. Come in here and talk about me. And I'll be glad to show you how I came up with this. As a matter of fact, I'm showing it to you while I'm preaching it. And I would love to be challenged. See, when we heap up Preachers. Huh? We got some favorite preachers that we listen to because those guys tell us what we want to hear. But look how far we have gone away from what God's word said. Because you cannot watch this, you cannot separate God's word with God's spirit with God Himself. You can't separate that. And if they're not teaching you, whoever you're listening to, what I'm teaching you, then you need another teacher. If they, can't, if, if they can prove me wrong, then you go to that teacher. But I challenge you and them to prove me wrong in what I'm teaching right now. She built her house, with, and then she put seven pillars to hold it up. 
Not only are the aged women valuable because they teach young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, to be keepers of the house or keepers at home, but they are also valuable because they teach them to be good. Wow. The word good means good in character, to be excellent, to be distinguished. Uh, to have a quality disposition, to be upright, to be virtuous. Yeah. That's what that means. Just, just be good. You know what good means. Yeah. There's a difference in good and bad. Yeah. You still got that conscious right. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You know enough to know what's good and what's bad. Yeah. Now, if you choose to be bad, don't call it good. That's the money. <laughs> huh? Just say I'm being bad. Yeah. Huh? And if you make the choice to be bad, then you take responsibility for being bad. Don't you go blaming nobody else, talking about the devil made me do it. No, you did it because you wanted to do it. Yeah, and, you, and look, you did call Jesus your Lord, right? But the devil made you do it when Jesus is your Lord? And the scripture said you can do all things through Christ that give you strength. You didn't have to do it. You did it because you wanted to do it. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So if you're saved, you got enough power to do whatever God told you. So be good. Preacher. Well, when Paul wrote Timothy, no, Titus, when he wrote Titus, he saved this one for last. I guess he didn't want to cut them off before they heard this one. Not only are the aged women valuable because they teach young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet and to be keepers at home, but they are also valuable because they teach them to be obedient to their husbands. To obedient to their husbands. That's what the age women. That's what the age women are to teach the young women. All right. They are to teach them to be obedient to their who? To their who? To their who? Your boyfriend ain't your husband. Ain't that it? You better say it again. Say it, say it, say it, say it. Say it Your fiance not. is not your husband. Preach. Preach. Because they can cancel the wedding. Right. Your husband is your husband. Right. He's not your fiance. He's not your boyfriend. He is your husband. You will not be obedient to your boyfriend. All right. What did I just say? Scripture does not teach. Scripture does not teach. Scripture does not teach. Scripture does not teach. Be obedient to your boyfriend. Now, right now. All right. Scripture does not teach. It does not teach. It does not teach. Be obedient to your fiance. It doesn't teach that. It doesn't teach you to start practicing. No. I'm sorry. If y'all find that, y'all let me know, and I'll, I'll, I'll teach it. But I haven't seen it in all my years I've been studying. I haven't seen that. So you don't practice being a wife when you ain't a wife. Y'all ain't listening. Uh -huh. Am I bothering anybody in here? Is any of y'all uneasy yet? Preach, preach, preach. All right. It says our age women that met these other qualifications ought to teach our young women to be obedient to their husbands. Yes. Yes. In other words, they ought to teach Ephesians 5, yes, sir. 22 through 24. Right. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, 
So let the wise be uh, to their own husbands in everything. The, the age wives or the age mothers ought to teach Ephesians 5 and 33. Yes. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. Yeah. And let the wife see that she reverence her husband. All right. Colossians 3 and 18. Mothers ought to teach wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Mothers ought to teach 1 Peter 3 and 5. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. And so in my summary, the age women are valuable. Yes. Because they teach young women yeah. to be sober, mm -hmm. love their husbands, right. love their children, yes. be discreet, yes. be chaste, yes. keepers at home, yes. to be good, yes. and to be obedient to their husbands. Y'all yes. yes. think I'm food? <laughs> no, I'm not. Watch this. Go back to the text. That the word of God be not blasphemy. That's why you ought to teach it. Amen. Let me tell you what happens when you don't teach it. The word of God get blasphemy. Now my closing is my introduction. All right. <laughs> when you don't teach what's here, then we give God credit for what the devil does. When you don't teach what's in here, we give the devil credit for what God does. When you don't teach what's in here, we'll call the Holy Spirit a demonic spirit and a demonic spirit a holy spirit when you don't teach what's in here we don't recognize who is God and who is the devil amen Certainly, we thank God for his living word all today. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise in here today. We want to extend the Christian discipleship, an invitation to Christian discipleship to you. You may be here today, and you are outside of the ark of safety. You thought about accepting Christ. You said you would, but you got busy, but here you are today. We come now to remind you that God still loves you. The door is open. The way has been made. You can come to the Lord no matter what condition you are in. Yeah. It don't make a difference how long you've been lost, what you've been lost in. The Bible says in John 6 and 37, Jesus says, He who comes to me, I will not cast him out. Why would you come right now? Why don't you come as the choir sings? Why don't you make up your mind and your heart? Close you can come. You. Whoever you are, no matter how old Close you are, you. no matter how young you are, God still loves you. Yes, Let you the may have saw yourself in what Pastor Davidson was Close preaching. Don't let, don't let, don't let your past mistakes keep you from coming to Christ right now. Why don't you come? The door is open. If you know for a fact 
that you know for a fact that you have not been born again, this is your opportunity right now. I would leave like I came. I would leave knowing for a fact I have been born again. Well, Reverend, you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. I don't need to know. It's not my business what you've done. God already knows. So why don't you come? Why don't you make up your mind right now? From this moment on, I'm trusting God. Come, 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 come. The way is made. Let all my worship. I make another appeal to you. Maybe you don't have a church home. You've just been wandering the land from place to place. Why don't you come? You're at home now. Why don't you come? Yes. Come now, come. I make one more appeal. Maybe you simply need prayer today. Maybe you simply need prayer. Why don't you come? If you need prayer, just come to the altar today. If you need prayer, just make your way. We see there is not one, but there is room at the cross. Just ask the choir to bring it down just a little bit. As we go to God in prayer, some of you have talked to folks on this week. You heard their struggles. You told them you were going to pray for them, but somehow you got too busy to do that. Would you join with me right now in doing just that? Pray for those ones that you've talked to that you said you'd pray for, but you didn't get around to it. There's no distractions. Your cell phones are off. Nobody's at the door. You can go before God right now. For your friends, for your loved ones, for your sisters, your brothers. Heavenly Father, our creator, our sustainer. You master who saw fit to reach down this morning and touch each of us with your divine finger of love. You father who saw fit to make sure the four corners of our room last night was not the four corners of our grave. You master who holds all things. You saw fit to make sure that our covers last night was not our winding sheet. You father who saw fit to keep robbers and thieves at bay. Yes, sir. You yes, made sir. old death behave. Yeah, yeah. Lord, it is at your feet that we fall at this moment. We come before your Father not trying to hide anything. We don't come, Lord, pretentious. We come, Lord, recognizing and realizing that we are here by your grace. We stand before you, Lord, acknowledging that we are sinful creatures by nature and, Lord, sometimes even by practice. But, Father, we take comfort in your word today. Because you said in your word that if we confess our sins, yes. that you would be faithful and just to yes. forgive yes, and to cleanse. 
So here we are, Lord, standing before you like naked babies. We come, Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We thank you, Father, for another day's journey. Yeah, yeah. We thank you, Father, for keeping us in our right mind. Yeah. yeah. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the activities of our lives. Yes, sir. Lord, most of all, we thank you. Thank you. Just for being on this side. Yeah. Lord, we lift holy hands to tell you thank you. How you kept us, Lord, down through the years. Lord, you didn't leave us when we was right. And you stayed by our side when we was wrong. And Lord, we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, that even now, God, you're already working on our behalf. We thank you, Lord, that you're already answering prayers of those that are standing in the gap today for their loved ones. Lord, somebody here is praying for their children today. Somebody, Lord, is praying for their husband or for their wife. Somebody, Lord, is praying for a friend today. Oh, Lord, we ask you to look on them today and just have mercy. Lord, we need you. And we can't make it without you. God, we pray, Lord, for every broken heart. Lord, that's grieving over the loss of a mother on today. We know, God, that you said in your word that when mother and father forsake you, that you be right there to take us up. Somebody needs your comfort today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody, Lord, needs you to hold them, Father, like never before. Lord, somebody needs you to be their friend right now. Oh, God, we know you can, and we know you will. Oh, God, there's somebody here, Lord, that wondering how they going to make it on tomorrow. Oh, Lord, we know. We know that you can, and we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for working it out. Thank you, Lord, for already opening doors. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord, for closing doors. Thank you, Lord, that you, you never did us wrong. Father, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you right now. Yeah, Lord. Thank you right now. We don't know how. We don't know when. But, Lord, we know you can. And for that, God, we say thank you. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to strengthen Pastor Davidson on today. Be his friend, Father. Be his company keeper. Pray, God, that you will continue, oh God, to knit him and his companions' heart yes, closer sir. together. Yes, Help them, oh God, to fall in love with each other all over again. Oh, Master, we pray for this church. Yes. Lord, we pray, God, that you would knit the, the minds and the hearts of these, your people. Master, every church door that's open in your name, look on every shepherd that carries your gospel. Then, Lord, I pray for my wife on today. I don't have to tell you about her, Lord. You made her. You will know all about her. Be her friend, Lord. Be her guide. And Lord, when we go down from this place, let us leave rejoicing. Yes, sir. Saying, yes, sir. what a mighty God we serve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all majesty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, let's sing that. Let's sing it. Come on, this is an opportunity that we get to worship the Lord. Come on. Come on, say it one more time.
Father, we thank you for all that have been said and done. Now, Lord, we pray for your word. Your word has been given. Now I pray it will work the work in which it was intended. Lord, we know that the devil is powerful, but you are all powerful. Lord, you can do anything but fail. And Lord, as your word go forth, we pray that it will fall on good ground and produce fruit. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And Lord, before we close this prayer and this benediction, we pray for every mother that is here today and that can hear my voice and that will hear my voice via media. Father, we pray for those mothers and we pray a special blessing upon them. Touch them, Lord, like never before. Lord, we have so many mothers that are so concerned about their children. But Lord, I pray that you would help those mothers turn those children over to you. That they will trust you with their children. And then ease that mother's mind. And then we got so many children, Father, that are bereaved because they don't have mothers. I pray your blessing upon them as well. And then, Lord, help us to celebrate our mothers that is left on this side of heaven. Let this be a day of honor and respect. And, Lord, we just bless each mother that hears my voice right now. We pray your blessings upon them. And now may the grace of God and the love of Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of us, henceforth, now, and forevermore. And the people of God said together, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. We have some offerings we would like to give. Will someone please come and receive our offering? Got at least two right here.